Hi folks, Will from NIO here, and this is the second half of our object lifecycle management video. And what we're going to be talking about in this video is some concerns around versioning and lifecycle management. They work great together, but you need to know how. And then we're also going to show you some example commands. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's talk a little bit about how versioning and lifecycle management work together. If you saw our versioning videos, you know that when you're doing versioning, you're going to create a lot of additional objects. If I'm doing lifecycle management, I've already mentioned lifecycle management does not set delete markers or anything along those lines. So you may be wondering, well, how does versioning and lifecycle management work together? It turns out lifecycle management has an additional set of flags that you can use to work with older versions of objects. Now, versioning is not required for lifecycle management, not at all, but if I am doing lifecycle management on a version bucket, I need to understand some of these options. So when I am doing versioning and I am expiring objects, only the current object version is deleted. That does create a delete marker. Non-current expire days deletes older versions. So if I have older versions and I want to make sure those get deleted, I would do that non-current expire day to delete those older versions. Delete markers do not get expired, even if there's only one version. Expire delete marker will remove any zombie delete markers that are lurking around in the system. So you want to make sure you maybe flag expired delete marker so that delete markers get expired, deleted, removed from the system. Okay. Otherwise, lifecycle management doesn't really work with delete markers. If I'm doing transitioning and I have versioning turned on, only the current object version is transitioned. Okay. Non-current transition days will move older versions and I can set a non-current transition tier as well. So I don't have to use the same tier for older versions or anything like that. Now, commonly you're going to use the same tier for all your stuff because it just makes things easier. But I can put older versions on a different tier if I want to. It's one of the features of the system. So let's say I have a whole bunch of older versions of an object and I don't want to worry about age of them. I can use the newer flag to only keep a certain number of non-current versions, no matter how old they are. Now, this is a common case where I will set up something like an expire non-current expired days zero or a non-current transition days zero. And then I'll use the newer flag to say, but keep three versions. So it's going to transition older versions or expire older versions, but I'm going to keep a few of them. This allows me to say, okay, I have an age setting of zero on my non-current, but I'm also keeping two versions or three versions. Okay, so you will see that. We're going to do a little demo of that in our next video. By default, this is zero. It's not going to keep any non-current versions. It's not going to transition any non-current versions, but it takes this whole number and it allows us to keep a certain number of versions. This is probably one of the most powerful tools that I use when I'm doing transitions with versions. Let's take a look at a few example commands. So if I want to expire everything that's older than one year, I do an MCILM add. I do an expire days 365 local bucket. Now, this is only the current object, but it will take the current object and after a year, it will delete it. If I want to do a transition, so here's an example of doing a transition older than 90 days. Again, I'm using MCILM add, but I give it both the transition days of 90 and the transition tier, icebox. Now, again, that icebox tier was set up in an earlier slide, and that is server-wide. But I can use this on this local bucket. Anything in the local bucket over 90 days old is now going to be transitioned. By the way, let me go back one slide. The MCILM add expire 365 for the local bucket will be a second rule with MCILM add transition. After 90 days, the object will be transitioned to my icebox, but after a year, it will be deleted also from the icebox. Remember, you're actually working on all the objects in that local bucket still, even after transition. So I'm still expiring after a year. I'm just transitioning after 90 days. Okay, so both rules will apply. So here's that new and processed use case that we talked about a little earlier. I would set up an MCILM add transition to your icebox, transition days 90, prefix processed. 
So it needs to be 90 days old and it needs to be in the processed prefix. And that's going to go in the local bucket. And then again, for the local bucket, I'm setting up MCILM add expire days seven in the prefix new. Now this is where things get, you're like, well, wait a second, I'm expiring after seven days, but I'm transitioning after 90. How I'm not going to have anything left to transition, right? No, because the prefixes are different. New gets expired. Processed gets transitioned. After I have transitioned the object, it is still accessible from the original cluster. The object here is provided when you're listing objects. So do an MCLS, it will show me what tier the object is currently living on. So there's, I've got standard for HW text, and then I've got icebox, the IMPNG has been transitioned because it was older than however many days I needed to set. All the changes happen through the original cluster. So it all happens through that local alias. If I go out and I try to do an LS on my icebox, I'm not going to see IMPNG anywhere. I'm going to see a bunch of series of random digits, hash codes, but I'm not going to see IM.PNG. And we'll show you that when we do our demo in the next video. And in our next video, you're going to see a demonstration of a lot of the tools I've shown you here. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like to reach out with us, you can connect with us using any of the methods you see here on the screen. You can also chat with us interactively on Slack at slack.min.io, or you can just leave a comment here on the video. Thanks, and we'll see you for the next one.